welcome to my channel. My name is Ada, your online therapist. So glad to be back. How was your week? Weekend? Ah, we're back here and we are ready for the next topic in our series. And this one I titled, well, I had to title because it was plain and simple. No need for the rhetoric. So we're talking about ethos logos and pathos today guys i'm hoping you've heard about it well if you've done marketing in the university college or if you are a psychology student or philosophy you should have come across these even if you're an english student why because these were turned by our favorite person aristotle but one of our favorite persons at its total as the appeals or rhetoric of persuasion. Three rhetorics or three appeals of persuasion, actually. So what does this have to do with our belief system? Well, if I needed to talk to you about something, how do I communicate it with you? When it comes to ethos, logos, and pathos, they're like the ways we process information. Now, how does that compute or, you know, if you were to speak to somebody based on appealing to their moral, ethical stand on an issue, fairness, you know, we talk about Rotary Club, talk about the four-way test, you know, this is the ethos that you are appealing to. This is, you're writing from a point of obligation, ethical obligation for someone to respond or to do something. This is usually used by religious speakers or by a charismatic leader who believes that, look, we are going to have to be responsible for our behaviors, our actions, and we have to face the consequences of our inactions and things like that. You know? So when you talk about ethos, when you feel a moral obligation to do something, that is an appeal to your ethos or you are processing it from your ethos, okay? Now, what about facts? Where, where, where do we have facts and figures and evidence? Where is that coming? Well, that is called the logos of logic, okay? So when it comes to giving information or appealing to a crowd based off of information, you would have that maybe, let's say, in a courtroom. Based on the facts, as a matter of fact, the courtroom is a great place to display these three appeals of persuasion because it's about arguing who's more it is said that the problem with law is it's not about right or wrong it's about who has the eloquence to argue their position which usually happens you know why do i say in a court of law well when you listen to opening or closing arguments, or even the back and forth with questionings, witness cross-examination and all that, you would notice that at some point the prosecution or the defense would say, you know, let's look at it. Should this person be able to get away with so-and-so? In a courtroom, a lawyer or lawyers or attorneys will argue that this case is not based on facts and figures and that means they are appealing to the jury's um logos that means there's no logical explanation there's no evidence you know in a court of law there must be evidence to back up an argument or claim and it's on the lawyer's side or the attorney's side to say this case does not have any evidence it's just hearsay you know no one's freedom should hinge on hearsay and therefore they will win or argue that or that this is not a situation of this is it's important to look at the facts the facts do not align with this accusation the district attorney or someone from the prosecution would say even though we don't have physical evidence but it's obvious from the emotional trauma of this situation that we need more to listen let's look we are human beings you know them. A lawyer would argue that this person did this out of rage, out of hurt, out of trauma, out of anger, such as in the case of sex, a sex worker who killed her, um, her victimizer, I believe that's the word I would use, you know, it's like, 
Yes, but she was abused, misused, mistreated, and, you know, broken, hurt, and, you know, she was enslaved against her will. And while, you know, murder is not good, but it's like, it's her, it was her self-defense. You know, she had to kill him to defend herself. Maybe she got tired of being beat up and things like that. That is appealing to your emotional side that what if it was you? What would you do if your freedom was taken away and you were beating and harassed and, and abused on the daily? You know, what happens? This is where you would say, what would you do when you've had it? You know, the lawyer can say she's had a breaking point. He's had his breaking point. And this is why he was, he took this action, you know, what would you do if it was you, you know, when no one listened to you, when no one, when people thought you were lying and, you know, maybe it, it's a case of continual rape and finally had enough and you just pushed him or she pushed him and then he fell and broke his head and died. You know? That's usually the case when someone, a sex worker, uh, a sex slave is on trial, it's usually this person was only fighting for their freedom and they took a chance. Then the last of it is the ethos when you're arguing. Um, I mean, when you, we talked about ethos, which is your moral obligation to do or not to do, you know, in the Christian Bible, it says not all things that are lawful are expedient, and that means. It might be within your right, but is it really ethical? Is it moral? A lot of businesses are, are legal, but they do not do eth morally ethical or ethically moral things, you know. Um, say overcharging, you know, it's there is no there's no law that says I can't charge you hundred times more than what you are what the item is worth, but if it's a monopoly, then everybody's, you know, is in trouble. So ethos would be your moral obligation to do something ethical, to be fair, to be um, a person of integrity. The, the logos part of it is presenting your case with facts, figures, and evidence. And the pathos part of it is appealing to the emotion. What would you do if it was you? How would you respond? You know, is it wrong? Is it right? Well, right and wrong are one thing, but we're humans. You know, was it an error of judgment? Was it um, a reaction? Was it defense? And so on and so forth. Oftentimes, unless you put yourself in the position of the victim, you might not be empathetic. And oftentimes, um, unless you feel, you know what, this requires a lot more information, a lot more facts, finding and research, we shouldn't just jump to conclusion. That is when you are banking on the logos persuasion. And when you talk about, I don't care what anybody says, it is my moral obligation to report a domestic violence. You know? Um, it's you know if it's none of my business but it's wrong that is your um ethos um persuasion kicking in so always remember that all three you can use all three you when you're processing information understand which part and what i mean by that is if the situation requires you to be logical then be careful when you, you feel emotional about it you know sometimes even uh or how we put it. In the case of domestic violence, as empathetic as you want to be, some lawyers argue, some attorneys would argue and say, has a crime been committed? Yes, there was stress, there was trauma, but should she or he go unpunished for the crime? You know, say, oh, he pushed me, oh, he made me do it, and so on. And truly, some people could be brainwashed, maybe, you know, from a religious or cult and say, they made me do it, or they made you do it. That is true, but are you an adult? Or do you have um, a mental ability of a certain level? 
you know, it's like taking responsibility for your actions. If somebody might have pushed you to do it, but at the end of the day, it was you who did it. You know, you could have walked away, you could have found help, you could have sought um, the help of the law, or, you know, this is where it says, do not take the law into your hands. That's, that's another persuasion when it comes to ethics and, and emotions and, and facts. It's, the law is the fact, or the law, law, the law protects the facts, okay? But the more non-tangible aspects are the emotion and the, the moral, the fairness, that is the ethos. So the ethos and the pathos are often hinged on a human uh, uh, believing that we can all be human, that we can all do the right thing. When it comes to logos, it's like, this is required, okay? So be, be aware of which um, of these appeals that you are using and at whatever point, it's not wrong, wrong or right, it's not right or wrong, it's a question of using the most effective. Ad advertisers use it, um, politicians use it on you when they're gunning for your votes. It's like, you know, don't let this person kill your babies. Don't let this person take your health. All that rhetoric will rife up, your, rife up your emotion, but at the end of the day, are they saying, is it true? If it's not true, then don't get emotional about a lie, okay? So it's important to ask for facts. It's important to look out for what is fair. And that that means even when something is your right, you know, can somebody, can, would it be fair when we talk about fairness, we're talking about um, equity, not equality. Equity means each one gets what they need. Not everyone gets the same. That is equality. Equality is everyone gets the same. Equity is proper distribution according to needs, okay? This is where the ethos would come in. So guys, thank you so much for listening. I hope you found this useful. Um, be aware, okay? Do not be a pawn in the hand of um, sensationalists. Do not be a pawn in the hand of politicians who are seeking for their next meal ticket, okay? Term ticket, as we call it. So I will see you in my next episode. Look out for more on the psychology of beliefs. Until my next video, take care, bye-bye, and don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe, and share. Bye.